is September 11. So let us use this time to, you know, pay our tributes to those who had who had lost their lives during this terrible attack. profound honor to address this seventh rally of hope and to speak to you today about a cause that is very close to my heart, the dream of peace and unity on the Korean Peninsula. As all of you know, the United States has a pivotal role to play in forging a lasting peace in Korea. One of my proudest accomplishments as president was to help create a new path toward a brighter future for all Koreans, North and South, a path by which the divisions and hardships of the past might one day be healed and really healed and to a level that nobody thought possible before, and the entire peninsula might achieve its true potential, which is incredible. When I came into office, this situation facing the world was very, very bleak. For decades, past leaders had failed to address the growing threat of conflict in that part of the globe. Former President Obama even told me that the situation on the Korean Peninsula was one of his biggest concerns in the entire world. Central to the bold diplomacy my administration pursued were our close partnerships with our allies, South Korea and Japan. President Moon and Prime Minister Abe both deserve enormous credit. They did a fantastic job. Together, over the four years, we made more progress than anyone thought possible. We passed several unprecedented and unanimous resolutions through the United Nations Security Council. Over the past year and a half, a global pandemic has ravaged the planet. As we emerge from this pandemic, that has tragically claimed so many lives we pray that all sides can recognize that now is not the time for more conflict, but for cooperation. It is not the time for renewing hostilities. It is the time for replenishing hope. And it is not the time to be focused on building up our nuclear stockpiles, but to be focused on building up our nations to make a better and more beautiful world. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the European Union is about peace. So it should come as no surprise that the European Union strongly supports Korean reunification and is in favor of reconciliation and denuclearization in the Korean Peninsula. The European Union has shown its consistent support to that process. The European Union believes it is important that the Republic of Korea engages with the P DPRK so that uh, it will be possible to make peace, reconciliation and reunification of the peninsula. Speaking on my own behalf, let me share with you that uh, I believe there is an imperative of hope for the Korean peninsula. 
We know the difficulties, and there are certainly important difficulties and obstacles, but we know that there are also conditions to make progress now, provided there is goodwill on both sides. Public participation and cooperation should also form the basis of this open process. The Republic of Korea has given clear evidence of good faith and of its willingness to make progress towards cooperation and the escalation of tensions. It seems appropriate for the DPRK now to reciprocate, namely making some concrete and credible steps towards denuclearization. The peaceful reunification of the two Koreas and the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula are very important indeed, first of all, for the Koreans themselves, but also for the whole region and indeed for the global community. In the three decades since the end of Russia's occupation of Afghanistan and Vietnam's rule in Cambodia, one cannot recall a period of intensifying military confrontation and superpower rivalry in Asia more fractious and potentially explosive than in the past several years. Thankfully, North Korea and South Korea seem to be bucking this trend toward greater fractiousness, with leaders Kim Jong-un and Moon Jae-in exchanging letters since April and announcing the restoration of several communication channels in July, including a military link demolished by the North last year. In the 20th century, the global ideological struggle between the U.S. and the USSR sparked three wars in Asia, Korea in 1950 to 1954, Vietnam from 1954 to 1975, and Afghanistan from 1980 to 1989. With the Soviet Union gone and China rising, the Chinese are ensuring that buffer states like North Korea remain close allies. In Korea, that means keeping Pyongyang on best behavior. Thus, Uncle Sam has no reason to boost its military presence in the South. What's your second we are currently experiencing an abnormal situation where people are trying to decide whether totalitarian states or democratic states are superior. Human bonds can never be formed by, love, by force. Inspiration and sympathy must be voluntary, and the bond between people should be based on freedom and democracy. Some countries, including totalitarian and hegemonic regimes, are attempting to bring about change by force. Political maneuvering of this type must stop. Thanks to my advocacy for a free and open Indo-Pacific, this strategy has been adopted by the US. Europe and the world at large. For a free and open Indo-Pacific strategy, however, the Taiwan Strait must remain peaceful and stable. Thus, the need for more solidarity between countries that share the values of freedom and democracy, such as Japan, the United States, Taiwan, and South Korea, is more pressing than ever. We will need passionate leaders. If we are to achieve solidarity between countries sharing freedom and democracy, maintain peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait, and achieve peaceful unification of the Korean Peninsula.
77회 통영을 재임 기간 동안 발칸 반도에서 오랜 기간 세르비아 독재 정치 타도에 앞장선 면 평화의 어머니 하나자 총재님 리더십에 큰 영감을 받아 분쟁 역사 깊은 발칸에서 항구적 평화가 이루어지려면 반드시 하나자 총재님의 평화 사상을 따라야 한다라고 강조하며 한 총재님의 평화 비전을 적극 지지하며 평화 세계 시전에 앞장서 나가고 계십니다. 아울러 트리니아도 토바고 엔. Distinguished fellow speakers, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the Rally of Hope organizer for giving me this opportunity to participate in the work of the Universal Peace Federation. It's very important to support efforts such as these that are being made to make the world a better place. As a result of globalization, the world is becoming more humane. Humanity's sense of interconnectedness is especially important in difficult crisis situations such as during the current pandemic. However, once crises are resolved, our tendency is to revert to mainly looking after our own interests. The global order has also been seriously disrupted in areas where we have failed to overcome the after effects of past conflicts such as on the Korean and Balkan peninsulas. It always seems to me that there are uncanny parallels between the histories of these two peninsulas. Just like Korea for many hundreds of years, we have been invaded and worked all over by foreign powers and in their influences are present even today. For decades, the peoples of both the Korean and Balkan peninsulas have had to live with crippling tensions in fear of new and escalating conflicts. Today, the struggle for the public interest, which was mostly limited to the efforts of individual states or alignments of states, is increasingly turning into a struggle for what is good for the entire planet, for the global good of humanity as all. Well. And that should give us a hope. That is why the contribution of each nation, of each NGO, of each government is so important. That is why the Universal Peace Federation, under the leadership of its co-founder, Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, is also so important. I truly wish the Korean people well in their path towards peaceful reunification and hope that a clear process is in that direction, as envisaged by UPF, can begin really soon. I particularly want to commend UPF's efforts under the umbrella of Think Tank 2022 to bring together over 2,000 of the world's top experts in relevant fields to find ways to make it happen. Thank you very much and it has been a privilege to take part of this latest Rally of Hope. The second rally of hope is an affirmative testament of the perseverance and remarkable outreach of the Universal Peace Federation, UPF, an organization inspired by the humane and benevolent philosophies of its co-founders, Reverend Dr. Sun Young Moon and Dr. Hak Jahan Moon. The Think Tank 2022, emerging out of the sixth rally of hope, was visionary and transformational. The Think Tank is independent, solution-oriented, and very inclusive, and is not an incursion from outside or any attempt to manipulate the politics within. Persons around the world must be made aware of the phenomenal strides and efforts made by the UPF and its esteemed co-founders in the reunification and peace process. The fourth estate, the press, must not only share the message of the seventh rally of hope, but commit to consistently presenting the advances being made for reunification, reconciliation, and peace in the Korean Peninsula. Thank
총재님 참 어머님을 모시도록 하겠습니다. 모두 자리에서 일어나 한학자 총재님을 환영해 주시면 좋겠습니다. Beloved heads of state who yearn for peace in particular with relation to think tank 2022, I would like to recognize as the great leader and as a model head of state, not just the seven speakers who have come before, but also His Excellency Samdek Hun Sen. I have listened to all of the previous speakers with a heart of gratitude. I, in 2019, in Osaka, suggested the launch of the Asia-Pacific Union. Thereafter, many nations are supporting this initiative, in particular in Cambodia, Samdek Hun Sen is very supportive of this suggestion and this time we are honored to have his participation in this historic rally of hope and also we are launching the historic Asia Pacific Secretariat and they have the launching of the Asia-Pacific Secretariat of Think Tank 2022. And contrary to the era of the Great Atlantic Civilization, in the era of the Pacific Rim Civilization, it will be characterized by interdependence, mutual prosperity, universal values. It will bring together leaders, peace-loving citizens, religious leaders, and peace associates. Peace-loving citizens and leaders are coming together and participating in this initiative. It is now time to have the peace offering. The peace offering will proceed in the order of an interfaith water ceremony and the reading of a declaration to heaven. In today's peace offering, representatives of seven religious groups from each from Korea, Japan, and the United States will pray for the realization of a heavily unified Korea on behalf of religious groups around the world. One, two, three, combine your waters.